ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am 12 Kyle. Check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to do is I want to go back, right? Um, I've been doing this podcast for a while. And as we roll over into a new year at the time of this recording is 2024. um, One thing that I kind of realized, particularly after I hit my 500th episode last year, is that like, I needed to do somewhat of a reset. And what I mean by that is kind of explaining to people because you pick up new listeners and new followers all the time, right? Kind of explain to people who may not have been here from day one to kind of explain how I got here. It didn't happen by osmosis. Uh, I didn't fall out of the sky. I didn't come down on an asteroid. <laughs> um, but, you know, kind of giving you a little synopsis of me, 12 Kyle, and, and who I am. Um and again, it wasn't anything spectacular, uh, as, as dope as I think I am, uh, you know, whatever level of success or pers- per- perseverance that I think that I had, uh, it came over a period of time. So I wanted to kind of, to quote Jay-Z, uh, allow me to reintroduce myself to you, the listening audience. Uh, so how I got here, um, at the time of this recording, I am... 51 years old I don't feel like I'm 51 I, I don't think I look like I'm 51 the grays might say a little different but um, as you can see on <laughs> YouTube if you're watching on YouTube thank you for watching um, but yeah I don't, I don't feel like I'm 51 but no it, it, it started um, way back in the day in 1972 um, I was born to my mother and father uh, I'm the oldest um, there's me and my brother Damon uh, and then my father remarried and had my sister, Kara. Uh, and so I think, well, let me just start from day one. Uh, <laughs> I think the word that I got was the day that I was born, it snowed. And it was like 10 inches of snow. I was born in Newark, New Jersey. Um, I'm from South Carolina, but I was born in New Jersey. Uh, and people always bug out. Just, Man, I didn't know you were from New Jersey. No, I'm not from New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey. We lived in New Jersey for almost three years, and then we moved to Florence, South Carolina, which is my hometown. And uh, that was key because my parents didn't want me to grow up in Newark. And no shade to Newark, but <laughs> I'm glad I didn't grow up in Newark either. Uh, my dad is from New Jersey, from Newark, and my mom is from Florence, South Carolina. And so they got married in 71 had me in 72 and they had already determined that Newark wasn't going to be a place where I grew up because you grew up fast and they wanted me to grow up slow like anybody else and have a regular childhood and I did um and so yeah I'm uh, almost three years older than my, I was three school years older than my brother Damon and so you know being the oldest uh that there that comes with a level of responsibility and uh, it's not one that I take lightly uh, I enjoy actually being the big brother uh, although now my, I mean me and Damon have always been close so it's not like I mean I'm the big brother but I mean I'm still you know we talk all the time and there's not one decision that I'm going to make without checking with him first because uh, I respect him and love him and you know definitely appreciate his views on everything and uh, like I said, we grew up in Florence. Florence is a small place, uh, relatively speaking. Um, Florence probably growing up was probably about, I don't know, 50,000 people. If that, it didn't seem that big. It didn't seem that small because you were really kind of confined to whatever area that you lived in. You didn't really, I mean, we ventured out. Uh, I had a great childhood. Uh, I did the stuff that everybody in my neighborhood did. Uh we played outside and and you guys hear me talk a lot of ad nauseum about being outside because outside was the dopest thing because everything happened outside like there was 
yeah, we had video games came around, and I remember I got a um, Atari twenty six hundred, like when I was twelve, and I think when I was like eleven, we got cable TV, and you know, I used to spend hours watching uh, MTV, you know, uh, because that was something do- new, that was something different. Nobody had, I'd never seen music videos, and then eventually, BT would come along, and and I would become a huge fan of. Uh, Rap City and so forth and so on, but um, but no, it, it was a my childhood was really really dope, uh, and it's funny because like I don't, I don't, I don't downplay it because I really really enjoyed it, and I also kind of feel sometimes for people who have had rough childhoods. My there was nothing rough about my childhood at all. Um, we didn't have a lot of money, but we were made to feel as if we did. Cause I'll be honest, like my parents, I don't think if I had to guess, and I know, I don't know the, the true number. I don't think my parents ever made like more than 30, $30,000 a year. Um, and that's a guess. So, I mean, by the time I had, you know, graduated from college and got my first job or so, you know, well, maybe my second job, but I mean, I was making more than them. Um, or what they had made. And so, but even in saying that, um, as far as my parents are concerned, they, they are easily hands down the biggest influences that I've had, that I have in my life. And they're still with me here, um, on this planet. Um, and I, I really enjoy the fact that I can still talk to them and be in their ear. And, and, you know, again, my mom and my dad are two people that I still rely on for not so much as advice, but you know, just, just talking to them. And we talk daily. Um, but like I said, my childhood was really, really dope in Florence, did a lot of things, played a lot of sports. And the one sport that I fell in love with was football. Uh, by the time I was eight years old, I was playing organized football. So the cover art that you see, which really was the, the inspiration for this post, uh, I want to say I was like nine. Um, as you can see, I wasn't wearing number 12. I, I didn't wear with number 12 until I think I was like 11. But uh, my first number that I wore was 84. And um, I just enjoyed, I love playing football. And you know what it was? I think more than anything else, it was really about the spirit of competition, just being able to compete. And so, like, I would play football with my friends and some of the older guys in the neighborhood. And I found out I was good at it. And I really, really, really love to compete with other people. And I think over a period of time, that drive as far as the level of uh, of pushing yourself to compete and then competing against others, I think really pushed me to be, you know, who I eventually would become. Um, but yeah, like I said, we didn't have a lot of money. We lived in, quote unquote, the projects. <laughs> now, let, let me just differ. There, there's, a di- there's a different type of, project in Florence, South Carolina, as opposed to, you know, Cabrini Green or um, Queensbridge <laughs> or the Nickerson Gardens. <laughs> yeah, our projects, Mount Zion Apartments ain't the same. Um, but it was low income housing. And, you know, we lived there until uh, I think like 83, 83, 84, when my parents bought a house. And what was interesting was, you know, they bought a house. And so we moved out of this apartment and all of a sudden now me and Damon, we have our rooms and we're chilling and everything was good until it wasn't. (laughs) Uh, Not long after that, my parents said, Hey, yo, (laughs) we're getting a divorce. Huh? (laughs) What you mean? We get a divorce. And like that was the biggest shock because again, for me, and for Damon, uh, we had never heard them even argue, you know, which is not something I can say that my kids can say, but no, we never even heard them argue. So for it to go from, you know, chilling in the house, we had a dog and, you know, we were living the quote unquote American dream, you know, by having home ownership. And what was dope was my school, McLaurin, was literally and figuratively at the end of my street. So I, it took me a minute to walk to school and a minute to get home. And all of a sudden, you know, my parents say, hey, we're getting a divorce. You know, it was it was a crushing blow. And so, you know, there was 
this was, I was headed into the seventh grade when this happened. And so I'm in middle school. And so this is when things kind of turn for me because I think like at this point, I'm playing football, I'm playing organized football, I'm playing baseball too. And I'm doing really, I was always really, really good student in school. I got good grades. Uh, <laughs> I can't say I was a nerd, but I, I was, you know, I, I was pretty smart. Um, pretty sharp, always pretty sharp. I uh, love the subjects of like language arts, English, um, social studies. Hated math, hated science. Well, no, I can't. Well, let me go back. In elementary school, <laughs> I really liked math and science by the time i got to uh by the time i got to middle school math and science was god awful i mean i mean hey it is what it is <laughs> you can boo if you want but yeah it was just it was just terrible it was just terrible so i was like no nah, i'm not i'm not rocking with this um but, you know, it got to a point where I just, I had to kind of figure some things out because now the two most important people in my life are going their separate ways. And so not only this, but I have to be, you know, there for my younger brother. And so, like, there's no blueprint for that. And I think as tough as divorces are, it's so hard on the kids. And so me and Damon really had to navigate through our parents' divorce. And not only that, but by the time we get to, by the time I get to seventh, I'm going to seventh grade, he's going to fourth grade. Not only are we, our parents getting a divorce, but we're moving away from the house. Now, fortunately, my mom never sold the house. She rented it out, but we were moving across town to my aunt's house. And, you know, that was going to be something in and of itself because now I'm going to a new school. I'm going to a middle school. And, you know, I knew, I knew some people from my school that was going to middle school. It's middle school's called Williams. And I knew a couple of people, you know, from the, from the neighborhood or whatever like that, but I didn't really know a lot of people. And I just remember one of my most fondest memories, uh, <laughs> was the first day of middle school. I got off that bus and man, I looked around and I see no familiar face. And of course my cousin Eric was there. You guys have heard me talk about my cousin Eric, um, that's like, I mean, we're cousins, but we're more, we're really brothers. Uh, my mothers are sisters and we literally grew up together and I'm nine months older than Eric, but we've always been neck and neck, always together. And so he was in the house. So that was cool, but I didn't even see Eric <laughs> that day because <laughs> we rode on the bus and it seemed like we got off the bus and he went one way and I went the other way. Um, but like I remember that memory of and then I I just remember somebody walking up to me say, Hey, what's up? And <laughs> the kid who said what's up, I didn't know him, but like he was this nerd. <laughs> I mean like nerd nerd. And I just remember just talking to him and then like some other nerds came over and I was really this, you know, kinda quiet, unassuming kid hanging with these nerds and these nerds were loving the fact that I was talking to him and I was like, I don't know nobody. Uh, but that would change. Um, I would eventually run into a couple of cats and we would become crew. And these would be, you know, my best friends in the world and still are to this day. And my boy, Jay Fresh, who I talk about all the time, uh, Jay Fresh, um, we went to the same church together, but I would only see him on Sundays. And then he came to that. He was at school, too. And so it just, you know, socially it kind of took off. But you're still dealing with the. Uh, the after effects of a, of a divorce. But in the meantime, I was balling on the football field, doing well in class. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> seventh grade math, uh, man, that was something different. That was, that was something totally different. I was, I, I didn't understand that shit. Like it was crazy. And, but either, anyway, I just, you know, matriculated on to high school. And once I got to high school, Wilson high school, uh, things were a little bit different. Uh, I knew more people and, I think who I was started to come out. Um, and I was never shy or bashful about who I was, but I think what I did was um, I remained very guarded. Like my crew got to know me, but outside of my crew, <laughs> I think I tried my best to control the narrative as to who 
I wanted you to think I was. And wasn't no tough guy. You know, I wasn't going, I wasn't walking around Wilson slapping people, but I wasn't no punk either. So, you know, I was like right in the middle and, um, I was cool with people. Uh, but my high school years were really, really dope. Every year got progressively better. And then in the classroom and then on the football field, it, things just really took off. And, you know, by the time I'm a junior, by the time I'm a sophomore in, in high school at Wilson, I knew I was like, I'm going to college. And I started looking at these colleges and stuff like that. And um, I was just like, I had made up my mind at that point that, um, you know, I was going to an HBCU. And because everybody in my family had gone to South Carolina State, which is a historically black college in Orangeburg, South Carolina, that is located 90 miles from where I live in Florence. I didn't want to go to South Carolina State. Um, I had to make a decision. I had a list. South Carolina State was probably fourth or fifth on the list. Like, there was no desire whatsoever to go to South Carolina State. And (laughs) as fate would have it, I ended up going to South Carolina State. Uh, Long story short, you know, I was doing my thing on the football field, and, you know, a couple of schools came looking. It wasn't heavily recruited because I was uh, (laughs) 5'7", a buck 45 soaking wet, but I was balling on the field, all, all region or whatever, all County, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so I was successful and, and I had really, really good grades, but I wasn't interested in going to Clemson. <laughs> I wasn't interested in going to the university of South Carolina. I wasn't interested in going into the university of Georgia, or any other place. I didn't want to go to any PWIs. It was going to be an HBCU. So I applied at Howard. I applied at North Carolina a and I applied at South Carolina State and some other place. And, oh, Hampton, Hampton. So I got into Hampton and South Carolina State on the same day. I got my my acceptance letters on the same day. And um, I was all but locked in to go to Hampton. Uh, One of my best friends, my boy Zell, you guys have heard him on here as well. Zell had already decided to go to Hampton, so I was probably going to Hampton. And then (laughs) I found out Hampton was looking at going on probation in football, I was like, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm not trying to get caught up in anybody's probation. Um, but in the meantime, uh, South Carolina State was still there, and they started recruiting not only me, but my quarterback, Keyshawn, and my tight end, Ronald Barr. And um, it was, you know, the decision for them to recruit Keyshawn Durant, uh, who was one of the best athletes I've ever seen in my life. Um, once they started recruiting him, I was like, and then the the recruiter, our offense coordinator, um, he pitched it to me. He said, hey, you can come to South Carolina State and you and Keyshawn and Ronald can recreate what you guys are doing here at Wilson. And we, I mean, we tore it up at Wilson. And so I was like, that sounded good. And I mean, it wasn't far from home. I was very familiar with the campus, everything. And then I knew Eric was going and Eric's older brother, Mike, was already there. And so I was like, all right. And so the three of us, you know, were committed to go to South Carolina State. And so I go to South Carolina State and, you know, even at Wilson, everything was everything lined up pretty good. I mean, I had (laughs) I had relationships. Um, Never got too serious. Uh (laughs) But I had relationships and and those relationships, I think, helped, you know, kind of form who I would become um, down the road. Still very much guarded, even in my relationships, Um, not letting young ladies get too close. Uh, Wasn't going to say the L word (laughs) unless I meant it, because my dad said, hey, man, don't ever tell a girl that you love her unless you mean it. He was like, you know, many people get hurt or die from that word and that stuck with me but um you know socially I was doing fine and uh I go to South Carolina State and it was one of the best decisions I'd ever made in my life um everything flipped upside down everything changed everything um I can't say everything was perfect because I had my bumps in the road and I've I've talked about them on other podcasts and I'll talk about them more as other podcasts uh in the future come up but, um, you know, it was it was a rough road. And, you know, I think one of the things that 
inspired this particular episode was there's a line in um, this song by uh, Jay-Z and Eminem. The song is called Renegade. And in the song, Eminem says, I don't think you have a clue what it took for me to get here. And that line always stuck with me because I honestly felt like that. Like people would meet me, people would see me and they get to know me, befriend me, whatever, whatever. And they might know what they see in a classroom. They might know what they see on a football field, but you have no idea what it took for me to get there because along the way there were doubters. And I mean, like, I'll be honest, there were people in my family was like, <laughs> you going to college? <laughs> You going to play football in college? I don't think that's going to happen. And so I use that as fuel for my motivation to to do what I had to do. Um, And I don't think it was anything malicious by it. I just think people, everybody can't see your vision. And, you know, I wasn't, I'll be honest, even in high school, I wasn't that focused. I was focused on football. I was focused on my schoolwork, but I mean, I was going to do what I had to do. But I wasn't like trying to kill it in the classroom. (laughs) You know, I wasn't trying to be valedictorian, but I mean, I was an A-B student. And, um, you know, I was very satisfied with my grades. Could I have tried harder in some subjects? Yeah, of course. But, you know, I enjoyed what I enjoyed. Uh, But like I said, by the time I got to South Carolina State, it was really about that line. I don't think you have a clue what it took for me to get here or what I did to get here. And that became like my motivation. Not that the song was out, but I mean, I'm just giving you an example of, my mindset was most people who met me had no idea what it took or where I came from or the mindset that it took to, you know, get to where I was. And it's not like, again, it's, I'm not from a big place. I'm not from, you know, I I wasn't ducking bullets on my way to school or anything like that. I wasn't, there weren't any gangs in Florence. It wasn't none of that stuff to distract most people. And some of the people that, I would eventually go to school with, but if you come up in a place and you don't really see a lot of people who have it in their mindset to, to get to a certain point and then keep pushing past that point, then you can fall victim to some of that mindset too. And I I tell people all the time, like for as much as I love my hometown, as much as I love my high school, as much as I love the people in that city, I knew the day that that my mama dropped me off at college, I was never going back to Florence to live, ever. That was never going to be an option. It didn't matter if I stayed in Orangeburg. It didn't matter if I stayed in uh, (laughs) Booyakaville. I was never going back home Um, because I think I'd outgrown it and I just really gotten to the point where, like, once I left, I left. I mean, like, I, I would come back on, you know, spring break and stuff like that and for the summer. But coming back to live, it wasn't going to happen. And I was okay with that. And, you know, what I what I did was I found out a lot about myself, particularly in, in some some tough times, whether or not I was struggling, struggling in classes. And even some of the classes that I struggled in, some of the struggles were – uh, shall I say self-inflicted? I mean, who gets an F in art appreciation? As I raise my hand. <laughs> I mean, in art, art appreciation, I really got an F. I mean, is that possible? I don't know. I know when my mom saw the grade, (laughs) she wasn't happy at all. She was quite livid and was asking, like, how did you fail art appreciation? Also failed another class. Only two classes I failed at South Carolina State. Uh, I failed art and I failed um, psychology. Yeah. Psych. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I feel psychology. Well, I, I know what to tell you. I didn't go to class. So if you don't go to class, then yeah, stuff like that will happen. Um, and same for art. I didn't go to class. But 
even in all of that, like being a marketing major in the school of business, uh, which there's, there'll be an upcoming episode about the school of business. Shout out to Belcher Hall. Um, I think I learned a lot about myself because there's rarely self doubt, especially at that particular time, rarely self doubt, but you cannot have self you can you cannot have have be you cannot be burdened with self-doubt but still have the mindset of how am I going to get this done I mean I go to South Carolina State I'm playing football but I'm not on football scholarship am I going to work to earn a scholarship am I going to take out loans am I going to graduate I mean all of this stuff is on me and I know that <laughs> there's no way I can mess this up because I can't go back home and I can't be like, hey, mom, can you give me five thousand dollars? You know, it's just not going to happen. So I had to figure some things out. I had to figure a lot of stuff out. Um, and both of my both of my parents had gone had had. And by the time I went to college, had had some college. Uh, but they had not has gone as far as I had gone. And so, you know, you, they're not really sources of um, information, if you will. So I had to figure it out. And I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, so I go through school, um, play football. We won a championship, uh, the Black College National Championship in 1994. Um, also, 19, 1994. I meet this young lady uh, (laughs) who I wasn't even sure that I even liked. I I mean, like, I didn't even look at her like that because she was younger than me. Um, And I've told the story several times and I don't, I'm not going to get into the details, but I would eventually meet this young lady who would become later become my wife, uh, Sharice. And so, you know, that was something in and of itself. Cause I don't think, you know, like you don't go to college at least I did. And I wasn't going to college looking for, I was going to college to have a good time, play football because football is my first love. I, I mentioned that on this episode before. Um, football has always been my first love. So long before it was hip hop, long before it was girls, long before it was anything else, it was football. And it was, football has always been there. And it's the one thing that I don't think ever put me in any kind of pain. Now, of course, yeah, you're going to get banged up from playing football, but you can get your heart broken with girls. Football never broke your heart. Never. Football is always that one steady thing there, you know. So, um, but along the way, just, you know, I found out a lot about myself. Um, and I became, you know, so much in, ingrained in music as well. Uh, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I'm a huge fan of music, um, huge fan of hip hop. I grew up in a house where music was played constantly, we had records. And my mom had records and my dad had records. And then eventually they bought me records and Damon got records and we had our own little record collections and, and music was constantly flowing in my house. And, and that's the one thing I think uh, the technology kind of robbed me from here is that with the advent of the internet, um, not a lot of music gets played in my house. Um, I mean, it gets played, but it gets played, it gets played in headphones and on iPhones. Um, but yeah, it, it would, it, all of these things kind of helped mold me into who I would become. Um, so I graduate and I mean, I have to make a huge decision at this point because I'm graduating 1996, December 96. And my girlfriend, uh, who I was living with Sharice at the time, you know, we're living together, but like I got to, at this point I've spent five and a half years at South Carolina state. It took me five and a half years to graduate. And those were the longest five and a half, but those were the best five and a half years of my life. If I could jump in a time machine tomorrow, I'd do it all over again. Um, I might work a little harder in some classes. Uh, Shout out to accounting, shout out to financial management. Um, But yeah, you know, so it was like, I had to figure out like, okay, well, what's next? And then, you know, I came up with the idea of moving to Atlanta in the summer of 97. And, uh, talked to Jay Fresh and Jay Fresh said he wanted to do it too. And so we decided to move to Atlanta together, which I, as I mentioned on previous podcasts, I, 
I just knew he was going to back out at the last minute. I, I didn't think for a second Jay Fresh was going to accompany me to Atlanta. And we came, and and I've been here since 1997. And honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I know for a fact I didn't plan to be here this long. It's, it's not like I wanted to leave and go somewhere else, but I just I didn't plan on being here this long. Um, but, you know, time happens, and you 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 – put your feet down and you plant your flag pretty much. Um, in 1999, I would, something would happen that would change my life forever. And that was becoming a father. Sharice and I gave, well, Sharice gave birth. I didn't give birth. <laughs> I was there though. <laughs> uh, Sharice gave birth to our first son, Dion. And um, that day, August 9th, 1999, changed everything for me. It changed the way I looked at life changed the way I carried myself and changed everything because now I had someone who was totally unequivocally unapologetically dependent on dependent upon me and I had to get it right and I wanted to be like my dad I wanted to be the best father in the world and you know that's still a goal and even having surpassed my parents financially I say this all the time and I, I really and truly mean it I don't think, like, my goal is to be a better parent than they were. And for me, I think that's damn near impossible because they are the best. Like, you think your mom is dope? My mom is the greatest. My dad is the greatest. And I just, you know, when the time, (laughs) whenever that time comes um, for me to check up out of here, I hope that my kids say the same. And um, so we had Dion in 99. We got married in 2000. 2001, we bought this house. And, you know, 2002, we would have Cameron. And then 2006, we'd have Brandon. And then in 2011, we had our daughter, Skylar. So we had three boys and a girl. And nowhere in the mix that I ever think, like, I knew that even back in South Carolina State, I knew that I would get married one. I knew that I'd have a child. I knew I'd have a son. What was interesting, I remember when Sharice got, when she went to get the uh, ultrasound when she was pregnant with Dion, she called me because she was in Orange, she was still in Orangeburg. I was in Atlanta. And uh, she said, you know, it's a boy. And I was like, yeah, you're damn right, it's a boy. Because <laughs> I, I, I did, he, he had to be a boy. Um, but yeah, it was a. Uh, you know, over that time time period, you know, I get into the workforce, I'm working um, and trying to do what I can to make a living, not just for myself, but a comfortable living for my wife and my kids. And even that, there were days like, <laughs> there were days, man, I, I didn't know how we was going to make it. I'll be honest. Like, and they were just because maybe the job wasn't what I wanted it to be or the money wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wanted more money and I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that and that's all fine and good but you can't just abandon you know your responsibilities because everything I did I did it for them you know and it's an interesting concept because if you're a father well actually before you're a father you're taught like just to do 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 and everything that you're doing is for you But then when you become a parent, uh, when you become a husband, you know, all of that stuff kind of goes out the window, like the priorities shift. So, and I'm not saying that I haven't done things for me. I've done plenty of stuff for me, but everything that I do, everything that I've done, you know, has been for my family. Uh, And and I tell my kids all the time, like, I was like, I wouldn't, we bought this, when we bought this house, it was a big house and it was just three of us. (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, I remember when my mom, I remember the first time my mom came in and she walked in the front door and she started looking around and she was like, it's a whole lot of house for three people. <laughs> Little did I know that we were going to fill up the house. But, um, you know, I don't think you kind of think of those things. You just, you're just kind of taking the next step. Um, and to be honest, one of the beauty, one of the many beauties about uh, this podcast is that it's allowed me to in my stories in my experiences look back because I think sometimes um, 
in the race that you run, we were always taught to, you know how horses race when they have the blinders on? They have blinders on because so that they can run their race and horses have their eyes on the side of their heads. Unfortunately, we're humans, we don't have that, but they run the race with the blinders on because you, you don't want them to get distracted by what they see on the side. And I think for a long time, I ran the race like that. Uh, not necessarily worrying about what was on the side of me, just what was in front of me. And that's cool. But it also, when that happens, sometimes you don't get the chance to ever step back and reflect as to what you did, what you did right, what you did wrong (laughs) or anything like that. And I think one thing that this podcast has allowed me to do is, you know, not just share those experiences to who I am, um, but you know, kind of give me a chance to reminisce and be like, you know what, you, you did okay. <laughs> because like, no matter what, I mean, society has this picture of, you know, what they think you are or what you should be. And I don't think I fall in any of that stuff because I, I don't live by society standards. I think there was a point in time where, you know, especially living here in Atlanta, you want to keep up with the Joneses. You want to get a new car. You want to get a new house. You want to get this. You want to get that. You want to have the flies closed. And all that stuff is cool, but you can't live like that. Like, you just can't. And if you live like that, you got to keep that shit up. I ain't trying to keep up with the Joneses. I just never have been. Um, But I think this podcast has given me the opportunity to do that. And it's also given me the opportunity to share. Uh, now I will say this, <laughs> I have some podcast friends that, uh, you know, they, they tell people from time to time that I'm a millionaire. I'm not even close to being a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> I don't have no money, <laughs> so I ain't got it here, but, um, nah, it, it, it's, it's all in good fun. Uh, in conclusion, I think one of the things that I've learned as I've traveled this journey is to one look back and appreciate what i've done and then also share my story because i think that's what this podcast app actually helps me do uh there's somebody listening to this podcast that's going to take some level of inspiration or say hey well he did it i mean like whatever you think i did whatever it is i mean i did it my way um it wasn't all me (laughs) i was definitely surrounded by people I'm someone who, although I don't talk religion, I have a very, very strong belief in God. So I know that, no, I ain't do none of this by myself. (laughs) You know, and I, I don't think even something as simple as meeting someone who I would spend the rest of my life with, uh, I don't think because I didn't step to her like, yo, let's, you know, let's kick it or whatever. It was just somebody that I just met, you know, on the humble and somebody who, I was actually resisting that meeting because I didn't want any parts of not meeting her, but just the situation. And I explained the situation before, um, which is is still comical to this day. But I I think even in doing that, it's allowed me to, like I said, reflect. And I remember just like a couple of days ago, we were sitting down at the table, whole family. um, And I was just listening to the kids talk. And I remember when Sharice and I were living together in college and we would just talk and we would sometimes lay in the bed. Sometimes we'd be in the car and we would just be talking about what our future would look like. And those conversations were really, really, really dope, but they look nothing like how things turned out. And I think that's a testament to us. I think that's a testament to, you know, our, our faith, um, and I think that's a testament to, you know, perseverance because it's not going to always be easy. And, you know, one thing that my parents instilled in me is that, you know, no matter what you do, it's not going to be easy. If it was going to be easy, everybody would do it. And so life is never easy. But um, like I said, this podcast is giving me a chance to introduce who I am to you. Um, there's 12 Kyle and there's Kyle. I'd like to think that 12 Kyle and Kyle are the same person. But honestly, you guys have to decide that. Uh, there are some who listen to this podcast that know me a little bit better than most. 
Um, and then there's some people that listen that don't know me at all, but have gotten to know me through this medium. And I'm thankful for that. Um, this podcast hasn't blown up or anything like that. And if it does, cool. If it doesn't, that's cool too. I, I make a few dollars at my job, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I, I got a call. I got $32 in my pocket right now. I'm good. Um, but I think more than anything as, as to going back to something that I mentioned a little earlier, um, there was a point in my life where I, again, I was very guarded and I made sure that I controlled who I let get to know me. And I think through this podcast medium and through this particular episode, you got to know a little bit more about me. What you take from that, I don't know. But I hope that you take my words and my experiences and find something in them to help you along your journey. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Remember this podcast drops every Thursday at midnight from time to time. We drop bonus episodes on Sundays at midnight. Uh, Make sure that you follow me and not only just follow, but also subscribe The podcast is on all platforms. We have a YouTube channel as well. You can subscribe there. Uh, If you feel so inclined, I told you I had $32. Send me a dollar. (laughs) Hit me up on Cash App. Dollar sign. T-W-E-L-V-E-K-Y-L-E. Also on TikTok. Follow me on TikTok, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, at 12 Kyle Podcast, at 12 Kyle spelled out. Um, Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. 5,000.